Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's session, we are going to be looking at the introduction to the financial market. So what is the global financial market? Who participates in it? How can you participate in it? How is money earned on the market? We're going to be considering all of this and some more. So stay tuned and um, if you have questions, make sure you leave questions down in the comment section. Okay. First off, risk disclaimer, you need to know that when it comes to trading in the financial market, it does involve risk. So you want to ensure you're trading with risk capital only and make sure you're taking proper education to understand what you're doing because anything you do is your responsibility. My name is Nana Obina Alexander and I'm the head of the Keto and Senior Market Analyst at Anzu Capital. I'm a professional trader myself and you know I've been doing trainings both online and in person of thousands of people over the years. I used to be former head analyst and head um, educator at Gemini Capital Markets and IV Markets. For most of your trainings, you have me as your host. Do stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the session. So here's what we're going to be considering today. The content of our discussion would look at the introduction to the financial market. What is the financial market? Who trades Forex? Why trade Forex? How can money be made trading in the Forex markets? And then, what is the requirement to trade on the market? Let's dive right into it and begin with, what is the financial market? What is the Forex market? Well, Forex, sometimes called FX, is actually an acronym that stands for Foreign Exchange, right? So it is a market where currencies and other financial instruments are traded against each other. Forex trading is more or less the simultaneous buying of one currency or one asset and the selling of another. Now here's one interesting thing about the Forex market. It is huge. It is the biggest financial market in the world. Now, quite simply, the global financial market is, you know, the forex market allows us to trade currencies, right? So if you think one currency will be stronger against another and you're correct, then you can make a profit. So you're trying to speculate on the um, price of an instrument or a currency against another. And if you're right, well, you make a profit. Now, how large is the forex market? How big is it? The second largest financial market is the New York Stock Exchange. It has a daily trading volume of more than $200 billion each day. That means every single day in the NXC, the New York Stock Exchange, about $200 billion in volume is traded. Now that is insane, that is huge. So if we're going to compare the, um, you know, the um, New York Stock Exchange or the NYSE, to you know, a gigantic animal, it might look something like this. Huge, scary, very big animal. But when you compare this to the forex markets, well, it will pale in comparison. It looks somewhat like this. $200 billion in daily trading volume is insane. But the forex markets has a daily trading volume of over $6.6 trillion. And that is why, as large as this New York Stock Exchange is, well, it pales in comparison. Now, we'll come back to why that is important and why that's an advantage. But what are some of the things traded on the FX market or the Forex market? Here, here on the screen, you could see certain instruments that can be traded. You have Forex that includes currency pairs, Euro, Pounds, Dollar, the Aussie, that's the Australian Dollar, the New Zealand, the Japanese Yen, the Swiss Franc, all these instruments, the Norwegian Krone, um, the Mexican pesos, all of these instruments are tradable on the forex market. You can also trade metals like gold and silver and copper, and there are also commodities like oil and other commodities and indices that can be traded, grains, stock, um, soft, and also stocks. So stocks like the Google stocks, or the share prices, Tesla, Amazon, you can make profits by figuring out, by trying to speculate on the prices of this instrument and uh, if you're right, or well, you make profits, right? Now, who participates in the market? If you're going to dive into any particular endeavor or any particular business, you want to know, so who else does this? Who are fellow players in the market? I can tell you the Forex market doesn't have shortage of participants. The Forex market is so huge that every, the whole world depends on it, right? Because every single major power plays a role or it's, some, it's a participant in some way in the market. 
And one of the key participants in the market are the central banks. So the central banks of different countries and different regions play a major role because, well, remember, we're trading mostly currencies, right? Currencies and instruments are against other currencies. So each central bank, each government is responsible for doing what they feel is best for their institution or for their for their um, economy. And in doing that, those things that they do would affect the value or the attractiveness that investors have to watch such a currency, thereby, meet, um, you know, um, affecting the price flow or the price or the increase, the level of demand and supply. So the central banks are huge participants in the market. That's why they have Forex reserves. Now, the next player or the next player, which is actually the biggest participant in the market, actually what we refer to as large commercial banks. Now, these large commercial banks, I'm not referring to your local banks, are big liquidity providers like, say, the Dutchess Bank, Barclays Bank, Citibank, you know, the Bank of America, big big bank ins banking institutions are that process the majority of the liquidity in the market, right? Now, beside that, you also have smaller banks and institutions, even people like Facebook and Tesla and Amazon and Google, they all participate in the Forex market, um, obviously, because they, uh, you, you know that the fact that every single country is dependent on some other countries, right? You're constantly importing and exporting, and you have to pay and uh, you have to pay for those raw materials or finished products or pay for services in the currency of the country you're, you're getting those things from. So everybody participates in the market in one way or the other. Then you have hedge funds, insurance, the insurance companies, the banks. They use some of your funds to trade on the forex market. And there are also forex brokers. And then you have retail traders like you and I. So forex brokers provide you the platform to be able to trade in the forex market and you and i who are looking to make profits on our own either as a full-time or a part-time um, we are all retail traders and we are all trading in the same space as all of these big boys so this is the reason why you have that huge volume in the markets because everybody is participating in this market and it's your job to try and figure out how to end from it. And that is one thing we'll try and help you do here by giving you proper um, you know, Forex knowledge or Forex financial education to be able to understand the Forex market. Now, you might be asking, well, why should I trade Forex? What are the advantages of constructing Forex uh, if you're not already trading? Well, we're going to look at a four of them, um, ranging from the flexibility to the liquidity in the market, the simplicity of entry, and then um, the options, how large the market is, which we spoke about when you compare it to the New York Stock Exchange. We're going to begin by looking at flexibility. Now, the Forex market is open 24 hours a day, uh, five and a half days a week, a week. Now, this is awesome. This is great because it means you don't have to quit your job. Now, if you want to take up a new role or a new job that is demanding, it's very, it's going to be quite hard to juggle what you're doing um, to what you're trying to learn. However, because the market is open 24 hours a day and it's actually very flexible, there are no trading restrictions. You can come in with even as low as $100, you can start trading and you could you know, look to hold a position for short term or long term. It's entirely up to you and you can make profit in any system. As a matter of fact, there are different types of traders and different types of profitable systems. You figure out what you like, what is comfortable by you. It's flexible in that sense and you stick to it. And then you can keep your job or you still have enough time to just scan the market, look for opportunities, and look for tradable, profitable opportunities. So the flexibility in the market is one of the key advantages of trading in the Forex markets. The next point is liquidity. Now, what is liquidity? Well, liquidity is the ability to more or less, um, you know, liquidate your asset. Now, that's a very good definition. But the Forex market is very liquid, meaning it's very, very liquid, right? Meaning that it's you, there's, you can instantly sell or buy, right? It is the most liquid financial market in the world. And uh, for this reason, there are always buyers, there are always sellers. It's the reason why you place a, a trade, even with huge volumes, it's instantly executed, right? And then when you're trying to close your profits, it's actually also instantly executed. A good example of what a not so liquid asset would be like is stocks, for example. If you have huge volumes of stocks, right? If you had, let's say you have lots of units of a particular stock and you're trying to liquidate your asset, or if you have a house and you're trying to liquidate it, 
sure, there's probably you're going to be able to find the buyer. However, it might not be instant as much as you'd like it. You know, just because you want to, you know, sell something doesn't mean you find an instant buyer. You probably have to wait a little bit of time, uh, which is why sometimes in stock you're trying to sell your shares, uh, but you have to wait for the broker or the stock broker to be able to um, get you interested buyers for you to be able to sell off your shares. So if you have a shares or a stock. If you, let's say you have a crypto, imagine those um, airdrops and stuffs that went up in price and then all of a sudden started going down. Well, you have them in your wallets and you're trying to liquidate them. But if nobody's interested in buying them, well, the price will just keep going down and you'll not be able to liquidate your asset. Now, you can't have such things in the forex market because the market is hugely liquid. There's always buyers. There are always sellers. There's no time limits. There's no limit as to how long or how short you can hold a trade. There are no waiting penalties and stuff like that. So you can hold positions for long periods, for few minutes, for hours, for days, for months, for years even. Um, it's entirely up to you. Now, the next point is the simplicity. I'll come back to this when I'm talking about the requirement to trade Forex. Now, if you're going to become a doctor or, you know, you're going to become a you know, medical doctor or whatever, you need to go and spend a lot of time. There's a huge bar barrier to entry. However, trading or learning to trade on the Forex markets requires very little barrier to entry. Actually, understanding how to trade is very simple. Most of the time, it's the our emotions of greed and fear that makes it a little bit complicated. For the on the you know trading or placing trades and executing uh, closing our positions is actually a very simple process. So it's simple in that sense that it requires low uh, you know basically low requirements. And then the size. Remember we said the forex market has a 6.6 .6 trillion dollar trading volume. Right? This is huge. Right? Insane. It's huge. And you know if you why this is an advantage is exactly part of the reason why the market is that liquid is that you can get into the market there's huge potential for opportunities because there's huge volume available in the market you can make a hundred dollar you can make ten dollar you can make a thousand dollar you can make ten thousand dollars trading you know in a day or in a week it's entirely up to obviously how much capital you have in the markets and how you're trading and how aggressive or conservative you are but the size of the market is huge Right, is huge and it provides us with good sustainable opportunities. Okay, now how does forex trading work? Right? Now, as a forex trader, what we tend to, what we are doing basically is we are speculating on whether one currency would rise or fall in relationship to another currency. So we're looking at two different instruments and we're saying, is this going to appreciate over this? If that is the case, I'll buy the one that is likely to appreciate against the one that is likely to um, depreciate. And then when the price changes and I'm right, well, I'll make a profit. So forex trading can be defined as the process of speculating on currency prices to try and make profit. Now, the value of a currency is influenced by a lot of factors. There are economic factors, there are political, geopolitical events, and even trades and financial flow that tend to affect how strong or how weak a particular instrument or a particular asset class or a particular currency is. You know, take for example, the current war ongoing in, you know, against Ukraine and Russia affects the price of crude oil or well, because of demand and supply. Russia sells a lot of natural gas and oil um, globally and with such, a, you know, such an event, it's going to hamper or halt or affect production and distribution. Hence, price would rise. Now, there are a lot of factors that could affect um, prices and um, there are a lot of angles you can approach the forex market as there are forex traders who don't pay attention to financials they just stick to technicals there are forex traders who only treat technical um, fundamentals or you know financial reports and try and make profit from that way so this is actually part of the flexibility in the market and you know placing the forex market is actually placing trees in the forex market is actually quite simple as you would see when we start looking at you know the platform how to use it how to place trades and close trades and all of those fancy stuffs right now um a good example of you know trading right of you know a sample example of what um, a, a, an average trade in forex market would look like. Now, the example I'm going to use is a local example, but you can translate that into an actual forex, um, you know, online currency trading. The objective of forex trading is to exchange one currency for another currency in the expectation that, you know, when the price changes, you'll be able to make profits with the appreciation. Now, look at this table. 
Um, let's assume that um, now the dollar is currently around 730 or thereabouts, but just for illustration purpose, right? Let's assume, you know, when the dollar was 400, I'm talking against the Naira, um, you decided to buy $10,000, right? So you bought $10,000 when the dollar was 400 Naira. In order to buy $10,000, you would have needed to, you know, sell or give the person you're buying from about 4 million Naira. So you needed 4 million Naira to buy $10,000. Now, let's see, months later, the price has appreciated. And you still have your $10,000 that you bought, right? You still have the $10,000. But the difference is this. One dollar is now worth 500 Naira instead of 400 Naira when you bought it. So you go back to the bank or the bureau, the change, and you say, okay, I want to sell $10,000. And they say, okay, the rate is 500, right? And so you give them $10,000 and you receive 5 million Naira in return. See what happened here. In anticipation of a rise, or for whatever reason you bought it, the value of what you bought has appreciated. It's just like buying a land. You buy a land at a certain price, the price goes up and you set it at a new price. And you make profit because you were able to be wise enough to invest or to um, you know, put your money in an asset that rose. Right? In the similar example here, you know, your $10,000 cost you a profit of about 1 million Naira. And you just made 1 million Naira in this example, uh, simply because you'll be able to buy at a certain price and then make profits when you sell back at the new price. Now, if this, if you if you bought at, you know, when it was four hundred and you rise up to seven hundred as it is now, you know, obviously the difference in, in the profits you make. So this is a simple analogy of what we do in the forex market. This is actual currency trading, but this is physical. Um, but this is the same type of um, type of concept that we um, we use basically when approaching the market. We Try to make we make profits by buying a particular instrument against another. That means we sell the other instruments to buy the other one, and then when the price changes, if it changes in our favor, we make a profit on the other side. Okay. Now, what are the requirements? What are the basic requirements trade on the forex markets? Well, like we mentioned when we talked about the advantages of forex markets of trading the forex market, and we mentioned simplicity. Well, as you can see on your screen. There are very few requirements to join in, to jump in on the forex market. With a mobile phone, which I'm sure you might have, or an, either any internet-enabled device, a mobile phone, a tablet, a laptop, a PC, whatever internet-enabled device that can install the, MT, the um, trading application, either the MT4 or the MT5, you're good to go. So everybody has, at least most people, has one of those, and um, you can even get it, you know, they're not that expensive. Then you need internet connection. So a device, an internet connection, and obviously your startup capital. So you need a mobile device, which I'm sure you probably have because you're able to enjoy this class online. An internet enabled, um, an internet connection. It doesn't require high speed internet or anything. Just a normal, okay, good internet is very, very well enough. And then a startup capital with as little as $100, you can start trying out your hand in the Forex market, which is about seven, um, you know, about 70,000 Naira at today's rates, okay? Now, and then the most important or one of the most important things is your broker. Now, Anzo Capital, we are a Forex broker. We are a multi-licensed, multi-regulated Forex broker. And then in the section of why choose Anzo Capital, I'll, I'll, I'll explain a lot more as to why you should trade. If you're considering trading the Forex markets or if you're a trader, why you want to do that with Anzo? Because a lot there's a, there's, going, there's a lot that you benefit or you stand to gain trading with Anzo Capital. So, um, you know, just like I mentioned, as you can see on the screen, Anzo Capital, we are a 100% non deal index broker. And you can see some of our liquidity partners down there from USB to Namura to Morgan Stanley, Citibank, uh, Barclays Bank, HSBC, and a lot more. So, um, Anzo Capital will provide you deep market liquidity with minimal or no record, no slippages on the platform, swift executions on trades and swift executions on deposits and withdrawal. And also a very flat rate. So our deposits and withdrawal are the same rates as opposed to some other platforms, okay? So what are you waiting for? Act now. Um, uh, this is where we come to the end of this particular session of our training, um, the introduction to the Forex market. We'll take it a step further. Now you understand what Forex is all about, right? You can watch the video over and over again if you want to get you grab the point even further. But now we've broke down Forex as to what is Forex, what is the Forex market, how is it traded, who participates in the market, what are the things tradable on the market, what are the advantages of trading in the Forex market, what do you require to start trading. 
Now, we'll take it further in the subsequent class where we'll now start looking at some of the basics, terminologies, and things you need to know to start trading and we'll continue to progress from there. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Uh, once more, um, good to have you on board. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next session.